Hi, in this lecture video, I will do a quick introduction to the alkyne functional group, and then we will discuss nomenclature of alkynes. So alkynes are basically hydrocarbon chain with a triple bond in them, and that's how we can recognize them. An alkyne can be terminal or internal. A terminal alkyne is whenever we see the triple bond being on the outside of a hydrocarbon chain. So here in this case right here, it has a hydrogen on it. And it basically means that this is the end of the carbon chain. Versus the internal alkane, it basically when the triple bond exists between the hydrocarbon chain or somewhere within there. And in this case right here, there'll be two alkyl group or hydrocarbon chain that are connected to both sides of the triple bond. And the general chemical formula of an alkyne is as follows, CN, H2N minus 2. So this is basically telling us that right here that the number of hydrogen is then equal to the number of carbon multiplied by 2 minus 2. And we have to minus 2 here since there are two carbon that are lacking the two hydrogen in the case of the triple bonds. So alkynes are quite common in nature and also synthetically as well. So here's an example of how alkynes are found in nature. So this is a toxin that is excreted by a, uh, by a frog on its chemical skins, on its skins as a chemical weapon. And so you can see there's a two alkynes in, in it. And so this alkyne right here are actually essential for its function as a toxin. And synthetically speaking, here's an example of it. So this is basically an oral contraceptive, and so in which that we see that is an alkyne in here as well. So this molecule right here is basically derived from cholesterol, and it is basically a synthetic cholesterol with a alkyne in it. And as for the physical properties of alkyne, they are quite similar to alkene and alkene, in which they have low density, low boiling point, and nonpolar. So if we were to have alkyne, then we can see that uh, for most alkyne that are four carbon or shorter, then they will exist as a gas at room temperature. Versus when they're five carbon or more to eight carbon, then they would exist as a liquid. And when they get longer than that, then they may exist as a solid as well. But very similar in terms of physical property compared to the alkene and the alkenes. And here are some of the commons alkyne to remember right here. And so this molecule right here consists of two carbons and two hydrogen. And this is called acetylene. This is basically some of the smallest, this is the smallest alkyne that you can find in nature. And some of you may be familiar with this because this is basically the gas that you would use in welding torches. And some of the other uh, example of common alkyne with this propagyl alcohol right here. So the propagyl refers to the common name of this group right here. So it consists of these two carbons, so this acetylene group right here, in addition another extra carbon to it. So this is called the pro propagyl group, and this is the name as the propagyl alcohol. So those are some of the common uh, alkynes to remember. And now, let's talk about naming of alkyne. So the naming of alkynes are very much identical to the, to the alkene, except that in alkyne, it has the ion ending instead of the in ending. And please remember that alkynes, it actually have lower naming priority compared to the alkene, but higher than the alkene. And so if we were to have a, have a five carbon long, and it is, a carb, uh, it is an alkene, then that is pentane. Versus if we were to have a double bond and it's still 5 carbon long, then now this is pentene. And if we were to have a triple bond, then now its name will be modified and this will be called as pentine. So the ion ending is, will be the suffix name of the alkyne functional group. And when the alkynes are named as a substituent, it will be named as follows. So we have this number right here followed by the hydrocarbon chain and the another number here, and followed by the ionyl functional group. Now this number right here, this is basically the locant number on the parent chain. So this is the locant on the parent chain. And this out right here, it depended on however many carbon long that the alkynes uh, substituent group would be. So this refers to the length of the carbon chain. 
And now this number right here is the location of the alkyne on that substituent. So this is the location of the triple bond on the substituent. And lastly, the it have the ending inol. So that's how we know that the alkyne is the substituent. For an example, if we were to have this substituent right here, and let's say here that we have to name this as a substituent, this would then be named as follow. So here, one, two, three, four, five. So it, the, the whole substituent fall off of the carbon five on the parent chain. And again, let's say this is our parent chain, and we are naming the alkyne as the substituent. And so we can see here, so this will be the carbon one, the carbon directly connected to the parent chain will be the carbon number one. And this will be number two, and this is number three. And now the alkyne fall on the carbon number two. So therefore putting all of this together to name this, it will then be five, followed by a hyphen. And now prop, because this is a three carbon long functional group, and then followed by two, and then inol. So the number two, because the triple bond start on the carbon number two on this substituent. And then number five, because this is the location where this entire substituent fall off on the parent chain. So that's how we would name the alkyne as a substituent, if we have to name it that way. And here are some of the common names that IUPAC have accepted. And so the, and this is the common way how to name some of the alkyne. And as an example, earlier we have seen acetylene already. Acetylene is also called ethyne. That will be it, a systematic name. And so here in this case right here, we have this example right here where we have this group and this is the acetylene group. And here we have a methyl group connected to it. So therefore, the common name of this would then be called the methyl acetylene. And for an example, here is the, uh, another example of how the alkyne are uh, being named the common way. So here in this case right here, this is our acetylene. And here we have a phenyl group on one side and the propyl group on the other side. So we now name this as phenyl propyl. And we put this in alphabetical order between these two substituents, followed by acetylene. And as for another example, so this is acetylene right here. So the common ways is when we name the triple bond as acetylene, and that is the main name. And everything connected to the acetylene will then be named as a substituent. And here we have an isopropyl group here, and another isopropyl on the other side. Combining them together, diisopropyl acetylene. Again, the word acetylene, whenever we hear of this, uh, of, or see the word acetylene, then that refers to the common name of the alkyne. So now let's go over some of the IUPAC namings of alkynes. So let's try some of this example right here. So here in this case right here, then again, following the guidelines, how we would name the alkene, a lot of the rules that we see in alkene are now applied to the alkyne. But except that in the case of the alkyne, there's no stereochemistry, there's no cis or trans, because the alkyne is pretty much linear. It does not have the different substitution group, the more than one different uh, groups connected to it. So here in this case right here, let's now start by identifying the parent chain. And here in this case right here, we have to select the parent chain that would contain the triple bond in it. Because the triple bond, or in this case right here, we can see there's no other functional group that will have higher priority compared to the triple bond. So here in this case, we want to name this as the the alkyne as the parent chain. And that will be our parent chain right there. And now, as for numbering the parent chain, we want to start from whichever side that would give our triple bond the lowest number. So here in this case right here, we would be started number one on the left side. So that way, by the time we get to carbon three, then that where our alkyne would be. And this is four, five, six, seven. Had we start from the other side, then by the time we get to our triple bond, it will be the carbon number four. So that would not be as good compared to starting on the left side. And here we will then have a two methyl group. And putting all of this together will be two methyl. And now the parent chain here consists of eight carbon long. And the parent name for 
7 will be half and now followed by 3 because that is the location of where the triple bond will be followed by the ion ending and that will be the systematic name of this molecule and let's now try another example so here in this case right here so again we have to ident identify the longest carbon chain so here in this case right here it would be the following and please remember all the guidelines in naming the alkene to apply to this and if we were to run uh, so again if we were to run into two carbon chains that have the same length then we need to pick whichever one that will still contain a functional group but now have more substituent groups on it okay so here in this case that will be our parent chain and this will be number one number two three four five six seven so here in this case right here we have a we have three methyl group on the carbons number five and number six which we can combine them together and call this a trimethyl group so this will be five five six trimethyl so those are those three substituent and followed by the parent name in this case right here seven carbon long so we have and now number two because that the triple bond start on the carbon number two and followed by the ion ending now so the in the older uh, iu pack name then this local number right here may be put before the parent names but on the new iu pack guidelines then it basically dictates that the number have to start after the parent name so please remember that sometimes we would see this as uh, so as being the two half time some textbook may still use this name right here but again this is not the most the latest iu pack guidelines so you may see this but the more correct way would be to put the local number after the parent name. So this would be the preferred way. And now let's try this one right here. So this one looks a little bit more complicated. So let's see if uh, we can still name this. And so the first step here is to really first identify the functional group of highest priority and make sure we name the molecule to give that higher functional group the uh, the suffix name that it's that we're supposed to do so here in this case right here we can see that we have alkyne and we have hollow alkene and clearly the alkyne will have higher naming priority compared to the hollow alkene so therefore we need to name this as an alkyne and now so the second step is to now go and find the longest continued carbon chain that would consist of this alkyne so here in this case right here we would then go in this direction and now by the time we get to this part right here then we have to decide whether we need to now go to the left or go to the right to find our longest continuous carbon chain and here in this case right here is one two three four five one two three four five so it seems in both direction you have the same carbon chain so therefore we supposed to now be choosing whichever direction that would give us more substituent so in this case right here going if we were to go to the right side then we'll be having one group here at the substituent versus if we go to the left then now we'll be having two substituent so here in this case right here we need to go to the left because when we go to the left then we will be having oops actually uh, if we were to we uh, we supposed to go to the right because when we go to the right we have be having more substituent and again when we go to the right as our parent chain then now this will be one substituent this will be another and this group will be another substituent group right here so by going to the right side we'll be having three substituent had we gone to the left have we gone to the left in this direction right here then we'll be having one substituent group right here and another substituent group over here so only two substituent has we gone to the left as our parent chain so in this case going to right give us more substituent so therefore that will be the preferred way so there is our parent chain and now the next step is to now number the parent chain so here in this case right here we have to either start from this end or from this end right here and we have to start from whichever end to give our alkyne the lowest number possible so in this case you have to be this carbon number one and this will be number two three four five six 
7, 8, 9, and 10. So here in this case right here, we'll be having a 7 chloral group right here for this substituent. And for this substituent right here, we'll be having a 6 ethyl. So list all of our substituents to make sure that we have everything named already. And now here in this case right here, we'll be having a complex substituent group over here in which we have a bromo fall off of a hydrocarbon chain. So the carbon directly connecting to the hydrocarbon chain, that will get number one, the parent chain. So this will be the carbon number one. And starting from there, we go find our longest continuous carbon chain. And now we have a bromo fall off of the carbon number one. So therefore, this will be named as follow. One bromo and five carbon long pentol. And now all of this locate will locate on the carbon number five. So therefore, we'll put all of this inside the parentheses and outside of it, the carbon number five. And again, this number five, because it locate to this locate number right here on the parent chain. So that will be all of the substituent group right there. And I'll put in all of this together. Then we will have to start with the this group first because this start with bromo versus this start with chloro right here. So again, whenever we put all of the substituent groups together, we put them based on alphabetical order. So in this case, it would be 5 followed by 1 bromo pentol followed by 7 chloro and then 6 ethyl and now this is 10 carbon long so therefore it will be deck followed by carbon number 3 and then followed by the prefix ending I. so there it is that will be the systematic name of this molecule and now lastly, let's try another example. So what happened when we have to name the alkyne as a substituent? And this is what this example right here is all about. So here in this case right here, then we can see that we have an alcohol and we have a triple bond and we have a, a hollow alkane. So we have different fun functional group here in this molecule. And all of this functional group right here, then the alcohol is the one that have the highest naming priority. So therefore, we're supposed to name this as an alcohol. And so this is alcohol right here. And so basically, the carbon that is directly connected to this alcohol right here, or this functional group, has to be included in the parent chain. And so therefore, starting from this carbon right here, we go left and right to find the longest continuous carbon chain that we can find. So here in this case, we have to go in this direction. And there you go. That will be our parent chain. And then everything connected to this highlighted parent chain right here will then be named as a substituent. And now let's now number the parent chain. So here in this case right here, we have to start either from this end or from this end. So we have to start from whichever end to give our functional group the lowest number possible. So therefore that means this has to be the carbon number one. And this is number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9 and 10. So here we have a methyl group fall off of the carbon number 3. So name let's name this and this is called 3 methyl group. And now on the carbon number 5, we'll be having our alkyne as the substituent. So here in this case right here, the carbon that is directly connected to the parent chain will get number 1. So that is number 2, number 3, and number 4. So here in this case right here, we have a 3 uh, a bromo fall off of the carbon number 3 so therefore 3 bromo and now overall the hydrocarbon chain here as the substituent is 4 carbon long and the naming of 4 will be built and then followed by the location number 1 because that's where the triple bond would be and now followed by the word inor so that's how we would name this group and we have to put a parenthesis and outside of it it will be the number 5 so this entire substituent fall off of the number 5 on the parent chain. And now combining everything together. So here in this case right here, the bromo, this substituent will be listed before the methyl because we have a B and an M right here. So therefore putting all of this together, we'll be naming this molecule as follow. 5, 3, bromo, 
view one I know followed by three metal and then now the name the parent name of this this will basically deck and then followed by two all so two all here is because the alcohol locate on the carbon number two on the parent chain and 10 is because the main parent chain is consistent of 10 carbon so as you can see naming up alkyne is really really easy